Hey everyone, Men from How to Priest. I wanted to make a quick video today to explain how to utilize the Discipline Priest from a Raid and Healing Lead perspective. I've had a lot of Raid and Healing Leaders contact me in recent months to go over logs of their Discipline Priest, and it seems that in most cases, there's a misunderstanding about how the spec works or fits into a Raid team. Hopefully this video can help you in learning how to properly use a Discipline Priest. Discipline Priests are Raid Healers through and through. If you were to think of the two types of healers in this expansion ranging from purely single target healers to raid healers, Disciplined Priests would be at the polar opposite end of Holy Paladins, with the other healers being somewhere in between. Discipline's toolkit does not cater to spot healing in a raid setting well at all. This video won't go into the weeds on how to play Disciplined Priest or tell you if your current Disciplined Priest is playing well or not. However, this video will give you an understanding of how to make the most of having a Disciplined Priest in your raid. First, I want to explain something that a lot of guilds misunderstand about a proper healing team. During progression, focusing purely on individual healer output is a bad mindset to get into. Many healers gauge themselves solely on how well they ranked, which at the end of the day does not kill bosses and doesn't solve many of the issues that the healing team is facing during an encounter. Proper communication and understanding of each other's strengths and weaknesses is far more important than how much better you did than everybody else. The key to success as a raid team is limiting overhealing when possible by not assigning too many raid healing cooldowns at once or having people try to help heal an ability that may or may not be covered by a single cooldown already. Think of a healing team like a sports team. You have a group of players who play at different positions and excel at different things with only one goal in mind, to win. Not everyone is going to score the most points, and that's okay. The goal in a healing team is to learn the damage pattern of a given encounter and adjust healing cooldowns to push phases. This is where Discipline Priests come into play. Discipline can cover the scripted or predictable raid damage when a raid healing cooldown would have been used, allowing your raid healing team to save a Trank, Healing Tide Totem, and other cooldowns to cover emergencies or to push through high damage periods of an encounter in order to progress. Let's use Krosis as an example. With Innervates and Blessing of Wisdoms, Discipline Priest can cover nearly every slam while Trank and other cooldowns can be saved for if you mess up a soak. So you might be asking yourself, men, that's great, but what types of healing cooldowns does Discipline bring to my raid and how do I use them? Discipline heals through Atonement, a buff that can be applied in various ways that heals for a percentage of damage that the Priest does. Discipline's artifact weapon, Light's Wrath, can be considered a raid-wide healing cooldown similar to Revival in how it's a quick burst heal but it heals for around 1.5 million health per person on 15 or more people. Also, Light's Wrath scales based on the number of atonements in the raid. The benefit of Light's Wrath is that it's on the lowest cooldown of any raid healing cooldown at only 1.5 minutes. If you're a raid leader or healing leader, you should prioritize using Light's Wrath first and often. In addition to Light's Wrath, Shadow Fiend, a 3 minute cooldown, can rival Tranquility levels of healing when considering other DPS abilities Dis does during its duration. This cooldown is best utilized during periods of high constant damage. Discipline also brings Power Word Barrier, a 25% damage reduction cooldown. This is the highest raid-wide damage reduction cooldown in the game for encounters that require the group to be stacked. Discipline Priests also do 100% more Atonement healing to targets within the barrier if they have their Golden Trait unlocked. Considering the different types of healing Discipline can cover, a Discipline Priest can allow for other healers to help DPS and conserve mana when they otherwise could not. Let's also not forget that Discipline Priests also bring 125 to 200,000 DPS as a result of their healing themselves. Discipline Priests scale with the amount of mana they can regenerate and receive in raids through Blessing of Wisdom, Innervate, Trinkets, better than any other healer. Because of the ability for Discipline Priests to dump mana in exchange for healing throughput, and Innervate making all spells cast within 10 seconds cost no mana, Innervate on a Discipline Priest is no longer a loss of 40% of his or her mana for a big Light's Wrath burst. It's a mana gain since the spells cost no mana and mana continues to regenerate during the duration. The output of that rotation also far exceeds what other specs can do within the same 10 seconds. 
if you have a boomkin and you have a discipline priest, you're best putting that innervate on the discipline priest. On the other hand, Blessing of Wisdom is equal for all healers regardless of the spec. I'd recommend to put Blessing of Wisdom on your best healer. Discipline Priests are not an easy spec to play, and it can take several attempts on a boss for the player to get a feel for the damage patterns and adjust to the encounter. High movement encounters tend to be trickier for Discipline Priests, and longer fights can be rather mana intensive. While I always recommend to put Blessing of Wisdom on your best healer, I would consider putting it on a Discipline Priest for longer encounters with constant damage output. I hope this video has cleared up some things regarding Discipline Priests and how you can best utilize them in your raid. Thanks again, and good luck. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and comment on the next kind of video that you want to see. Also, be sure to join us in Discord.